Welcome everyone to the July um, 2021 campfire chat. Um, we're going to be talking about civi events today and I'm going to hand it off to Jenna to introduce herself and then do a quick demo and then we'll do a Q&A afterwards. Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Dillette and I'm from Square and I'll be demoing about civi events. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Today I'll be demoing from Civi CRM that is installed with Drupal. So full disclaimer of some things that you'll see are um, Drupal based functionality that works with Civi CRM. So the first thing I wanted to do before we look at events in particular is center events and the event functionality of Civi CRM within the contact management overall. And so what we're looking at is um, my contact record in one of our client system, the International Mountain Bicycling Association. And as you know, for everybody who has already worked with Civi, whatever your experience is, it's a contact management system. So as an individual record, you can see basic information about me, my employer, associations, address, contact information. And then along on the left-hand side, or perhaps your options are in a top menu, whatever the format of your contact record looks like, you also have the events that a contact is a participant of. Because as we know, contacts take action. Contacts can sign up for memberships. They can make donations. They can register for events. They can have different roles at events. They could be a volunteer at one event, an attendee at another event. And so what they do with an event within Civi CRM is they are thought of as a participant. And so there's one contact record and they can have an infinite number of participant records at events. Another thing I want to note about just contact management in general and how that relates to events is your custom data structure. So as you know, you can have an unlimited number of custom fields. So for example, this organization has custom fields related to their membership use, which is about what region their membership is with, who their primary chapter, so that's a chapter-based organization, who their primary chapter is with, and any other chapter affiliations. You likely have very different um, custom fields that are relevant to your own organization. And if everybody could go on mute, that is not already, that would help with the audio recording quality. So, so the same with event participation. Any contact can be with, and I'm gonna pause. Bridget, can you mute your mic, please? Bridget, mute your mic. Going to mute. All right, thank you. Um, so, so you see in my contact record right now within this system, I'm registered for just one event. If I were to click into that, as you know, anything that's blue within Civi CRM, you can click and view more details. So this is an, a, um, an important piece of what becomes the anatomy of your contact records, whether that's an organization or an individual. I also wanted to note that any data that you already have that's within existing systems or other systems you're wanting to integrate can be imported into Civi CRM. There's a great user interface for importing events themselves. So if you have events that are external and you want to create them in mass, you can do so. Um, there's good documentation in Civi CRM for how to do that. And you can also import participant data. And so the important thing there is that the events already need to exist within Civi CRM. So that could be kind of a two-part process. You set up all your events. And then after that, you can import the participant data. So at one bulk import, we could update this from say attendance at one event to attendance at seven events, because maybe you're making a transition from other um, event management systems into Civi CRM. Or you're running for whatever reasons, you're running um, event registrations in parallel. So you have one system for certain types of events and um, you're using Civi CRM for other types of events. Another thing I want to do is note the searchability and the usefulness of finding participant data. So as we just noted, um, I am a contact in the system and as a contact, I can do all kinds of things. I can have a membership, I can be a participant of the event, I can make a donation. So if we look at advanced search, have that tab open, we're looking at the advanced search screen, which hopefully, as you know, is kind of the, <laughs> the big bathtub of every single field and piece of data that you have within your system. At the very top, I, don't, I think it took me a year and a half before I realized this was here, <laughs> you have the option of display results as. By default, it is always set to contacts. So when you click search on any advanced search, then it will show your results as contacts. You can also change that so you're displaying them as event 
different participants. And so that doesn't mean that you can't use any different filters. It just means that re the results, the search results of your filter will show up differently. And while we're here, you can take note that you can also display your results as contribution records or as memberships or activities or mailings. And so even from here, that's a, a valuable way to see the same data in a different way. And so wanted to point that out of event participant. What this ends up functionally doing is then looking a lot more like if I go to events, find participants, because we, as we know, there's sort of three different ways to get to the same place, right? In CiviCRM to pull the same data. So this search here of events find participants is going to pull up and show any of the records if I just click search, which will show a lot of contacts. I'll go back and do that within a different system that is all test data. When I click search, that would show all test participants. So let's do that within this demo environment. So this is one of Square's um, demo environments. This is a Drupal 8 CiviCRM install. And so we're on the find participant screen. If I just click search, then we'll see all the participants that we have, which as you see, there's just four. Another trick that's very valuable that I want to show is also how you can take action on your participants in bulk. And so from the events find participant screen, I've done my search. Let's pretend like I've set a bunch of criteria such as the event type or when they registered or what group they're part of. There's a lot of uh, we could spend a lot of time even understanding what each of these fields mean. Uh, but let's let's jump right to the results and see what we can do with the results. So your event is done. You want to accurately note the status of what each of those attendees had when they attended. And so I can either select the ones I want to update or I can just select all. And one of my actions is to update multiple participants. When I click on that, it's going to take me to a screen that allows me to select a profile for what I want to update. And default out of the system, there's one that's called participant status. And you can ignore these ghost buttons, a little theme change. So what we see here is it's listing out all of those participants, which as we know are contact records that have participant data. And it's showing the name, their email address, the event that they were registered for and their participant status. Now let's say that all of these attended. So I want to say that everybody attended. I can click this little copy button in the upper left corner and that's going to copy down the whole list. But you know what this third one down, they were a no show. So I can update in bulk. Let's think about what this would look like if you had 50 and how much quicker it is to say, yes, these 47 people attended. I can do that with one button by selecting the top and copying it down, change the status of those that either no showed or canceled. And then when I update my participants, that updates all of those records in, um, in, one, in one go. So now we see we're back on the view participant screen and we can see that the status has been updated. So if, for example, I go back to a contact record and I see events for this contact that they've participated in, then I now see that updated status since that's, that's um, automatic and is um, correct everywhere you see that data because it's the same piece of data. So there's, there's lots of ways to take action. And especially since I heard a lot of folks in the beginning talk about the way that they're sort of using systems in parallel, I think it's an important note and, and takes additional um, reading and, and research beyond what we can cover in the call today, but the reality of bulk action into the system, which is how things can be more easily consolidated importing all of the events that you have external to the system, importing participants. So then when you want to start doing searches and create a smart group based on anybody who's been an attendee in an event of type fundraiser, then you can do that because all of your data is in one place, whether or not you're even having registrations managed out of. There's some, there's some nice options um, to kind of transition you over instead of it having to be kind of a cold turkey start stop within your other environments. Okay, I'm gonna refer back to my note. Okay, another thing I wanted to note that, that we like and have done um, with a few different clients is being able to use campaigns in, in unique ways. And so I know that there were some, some questions about how to also track dollars um, that come in. So for example, you can have um, completely different financial accounts and types for the different things that you do. So a member fee being different than an event fee, different than a donation. 
Um, and and all of the ways that those are set up first is your financial accounts and then creating financial types based on collections of those financial accounts. Well, campaigns from a financial standpoint, I like as a way to kind of group all of that together. So for example, maybe you have an event that is part of a specific campaign and you also have a fundraising initiative that's part of a specific campaign. So campaigns is another component of Civi CRM that can be easily enabled within the UI. And there's some quick documentation for where you go um, in the setting system settings in order to turn that on. And then once you have campaigns and depending on what they're enabled for, that can be another way from your advanced search or reporting option that especially from a money perspective, you can see the totals all together. So for example, if I want to look for events that have been part of the end of year giving 2019 campaign, that would be the same campaign if I wanted to look at other contributions of a specific financial type that were also part of a campaign. And then the way from a results perspective, since we're on advanced search, I can then view and display the results that come up from that search, either as contacts or contributions or event participants, but having then the campaign, that one thing that can go across all the system, a campaign can be part of uh, money that's received from a contribution form, just as it can be part of money that's received from an event registration form. Um, I think of that as kind of the a larger bucket that it's nice to be able to put things in instead of um, having to filter and take action based on specific financial types, which just doesn't always work as well. And so that's um, that's one little one little trick that we've had had great success um, for filtering and reporting purposes for some of the organizations we work with. Um, I think next up, what, what I'm going to show is kind of the display of events. So I heard some folks talk about being dissatisfied with um, the way certain screens look or the feeling of information being redundant. So we, we recently implemented a system for the network for the National Library of Medicine where they transitioned from using a kind of Drupal based um, CRM system to everything being managed out of Civi CRM and using the case module heavily, the events component heavily and membership component heavily. And so what we're looking at here is kind of a dev instance of the network for the National Library system. And this, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is Drupal. And so what we're looking at is a user dashboard where they can see the previous classes that this user, when they're logged into the system, that this user has registered for, and then click in to view more details. All of this is possible with um, Civi CRM entity, that module, to be able to take your Civi CRM data and um, develop with it in site building um, within Drupal. So when I click into from being to doing to look at that class that I registered for, I also wanted to show that this is another option for how you can set up and have your Civi CRM data displayed. Again, it, this in this case being Drupal based. And so hopefully there's some WordPress folks on the call as well to balance out and share some tips and the way they do things in WordPress. So I can have all of my class details and information, look at the anatomy of this, um, this event within Civi CRM next. I can also have the display of the recording. All this is is a link to YouTube that is um, an after the fact. And the benefit of having it built this way and these links is that then I can control the display of which fields are viewable based on my role, whether or not I'm registered for the event or if I'm not registered. So for the purposes of the Network for the National Library of Medicine, they wanted to make the class recordings and access details available only if you've actually registered for the class. So let's say that the, the class is completed and um, the recording is up. They want that recording to still be available to any of those individuals who had registered for it, but not for folks who did not register for the event. And so having um, the event information and display built this way allows for then that kind of field level display and also allows for more um, granular control over the way the information is displayed. So then it can just be more on branding or formatted. And as you can see, kind of in a two column format that you want with different headings and, and formatting options. So let's look at what this event looks like within Civi CRM. So here's the event. You can ignore these ghost buttons. Need to get that updated. 
configuring the event. This is all the same tabs that likely everybody who has Civi event already enabled within their installation. These are all the same tabs that you have. We have the event type, which anytime you see a little wrench next to a field, that means that you can customize. Go ahead and click on that. You can customize to enable, add a new event type, disable the events, and so your system is unique to your needs. That's why you can turn on, turn off different functionality. So every system could be the same software, but end up functioning and working in a different way. That's the same with attendee role. So we have the event type. You can see they have campaigns enabled. There's no campaign used for this particular event. We have our role, the event title, a summary versus complete description. That's where in certain types of display or even, even on the Civi event info page, even if it's not some sort of Drupal based event display view, um, there can be that, that front end theming work to make these fields stand out in a different way. And so it's not like you can't do some of that same work um, without using Drupal. So I wanna point that out too, that there's a lot that just with front end um, design, the fields can be displayed in a specific way. You have your start and end date. In this case, this organization, we have a bunch of custom fields for the events themselves. And so, and they are grouped by class detail fields, class contacts, class access and recording fields. So access details that are sent then when someone is registering for the event. Um, I know that we've um, worked with some other clients where, and maybe this has been the case for you on your confirmation, on your email confirmation, which is part of the online registration screen. Maybe you throw in those Zoom credentials that are part of the online event registration email confirmation. Maybe that's the way that you're sharing some credentials. In this case, they wanted those to be part of the event information itself. And because like I mentioned for the display here, we can control the display of those access details based on the registration status and whether or not that user is authenticated within the system, meaning if they're logged in or not. And then they have some other details that's for their internal tracking and so for their purposes there's some other things they want to note about their events that don't matter at all to the public, but it does help them kind of sort organize all of the opportunities they have. And so just provides them with additional filter options when they are say looking at event participation or running reports with data. This can also be valuable um, when your system is part of a network of systems and it needs to be part of some sort of data warehouse. And so if, if there's other requirements and reporting and storing requirements beyond what you have in Civi, some of these fields can also be valuable whether or not they have any use to the external um, external population. So if we look at an event confirmation screen then, so this would be my registration for this event. And you can also see the unique thing here is having class access details. In this case, this field is coming from the event information and is not coming from, um, from just being plugged into a um, notification here as part of online registration. I'm gonna pause momentarily and just look at chat to see if there's anything that's come up that I should want to. Okay, thanks, yeah. And the point, and someone just interrupt me then. <laughs> I saw we'll get to questions shortly. So if, um, if anybody would like me to answer anything in, in response to what we're looking at, just let me know. Okay. Another thing with, um, so first of all, I guess I'll go back to a couple of I had a, I had a quick question. I was wondering, there was sure. a field about, um, about the platform that the events were held on. Yes. And it, uh, I forget what options you had. I'm just kind of curious yeah. as to how these integrate, whether we're doing an event on Zoom or if we're doing something through Eventbrite, because I know, I guess, registrations may be somewhere else or YouTube, live, like all these different platforms. I don't know whether it's just like, keeping track of what was used or if there's actual some way of linking these things together so it's not like we're yeah. doing replicate data. That's a great question. So in this case, this is purely for tracking purposes um, and for communicating to them in a way for them to filter their opportunities and see impact um, for the kind of attendance and the kind of engagement. Um, they also have another um, another option here about the class format, mm -hmm. whether it's scheduled or on demand. And I know the on demand has significantly shifted yeah, where right. registration is more kind of constantly open or open for a much longer period. And then that's where that sort of access control of then being able to see a recording or access the access credentials to view on Moodle or Zoom or 
a private recorded link is valuable, knowing that you can continue to collect the registrations for something that's on demand over time and removing farther away from there being so many, this is the event on this date between seven and 9 p.m. and that's the only time it's happening. And so, um, so these are all custom fields for events. And I think that that data structure is definitely something that working with someone, even if it's on the consulting basis of where and how to set up your custom data fields is very valuable. The example I always give with event participants is what should live on the contact record versus what should live on the participant record, knowing that as a contact, as an individual, I can be a participant at any number of events. And maybe in some events I'm vegan and in other events I want the meatloaf, you know, so that is data that is not relevant on my contact record, my, my whopping between my dietary preferences, that's something that's valuable on the participant record. And so that data structure of what you have set up, for example, I'll just go to the custom fields here for this system. The structure of your data and whether that is related to relationships that are between contacts or for individuals, or you see they use cases a lot, or we see here those details that were part of the class configuration here, class details, class access and recordings, class contacts, those here. You can even note that they could be for a specific event type. Here it's noted that these are for any event. So whether it's a fundraiser event or a meeting, um, these, these custom field sets would show up as well as if there was any for participants and I'm just scrolling through and noting that they don't have any custom fields for participants. And so that um, data structure, which is often something that ideally, you know, you can get right early within your installation. If not, it's, you can make that change. Sometimes that involves a little bit of um, kind of internal system migration from these fields. Now I want them to live over here and then I can disable those fields. Um, but, but getting that right is going to kind of keep those doors really wide open for then the possibilities of what you can do with your data structure. Okay, let's go back. So Gina, um, we, can, um, we can wrap up the demo in about five minutes and Great. move to the Q and A. Um, I think somebody asked a question about scheduled reminders. Perfect, let's look at scheduled reminders next then. So for this event, we see that no scheduled reminders are set up currently, so we can easily add a reminder. And there are great options for this. So you can see any anything within Civi overall that has a little red asterisk next to it or an asterisk of whatever color it is in your system means it's required. And so I'll just say test for demo. And you can have that based on the participant status. And if you remember the participant status is something that you can control that can be configured per the requirements of your system. You can either say the specific date that this scheduled reminder should go out, or I think more valuable, the number of hours, days, weeks, months, years, either before or after the event start date, end date, registration start or end date. And so very granular control over exactly when something happens. So for example, if I wanna say two hours before the event start date is, Hey, remember to read that chapter, come prepared. We'll see you soon. Or two days after the event end date is, thanks so much for coming. Here's a link to fill out a survey in response to what you thought of the event. And so you can have any number of these. Another great thing about the scheduled reminders is that they are part of event templates, which we have not talked about yet. And I'll, and I'll do a quick show of that. And that's where you basically save a bunch of the data about your events that you know doesn't really change. And then that makes it a lot quicker to set up events in the future. And that can be a really handy way just to cut out whatever those minutes are in event setup. And the thing that comes with those templates is your scheduled reminders. And having these kind of relative dates instead of a specific calendar date is what travels so well when um, with a template because it's based on the event specific information, not a specific day on the calendar. So if we go down, you can see that if you want, you could even have this sent out multiple times on every certain number of hours until um, a certain date. So you say you want it every three hours until the event start date. Um, you can control who it's coming from and how that appears. And if you want, you can also either limit it to a 
type of specific participant role. So maybe your participant roles, you have some that are volunteers and others that are attendees. Maybe you have scheduled reminders that you only want to go to those volunteers because you have special instructions for them. And you have another scheduled reminder that you only want to go to say the, um, the attendee and what they should do when they show up. Or you can include by any number of roles. Another option you can do is just throw in an additional group. So maybe you have an internal staff group that notifies everybody within your organization and you want any of these scheduled reminders to also include them. So that's a way that then you can select from um, and have a group included within these scheduled reminders. And so there's lots of flexibility about who should or should not receive these communications. And once you set this screen up and this messaging up, you walk away, you did your work and the system will send it out correctly. Um, from here, you can use a template and templates in CiviCRM, they're used all across the system. They're a way to basically save the text, save the language, links, things like that that you want to use. Those are configured within a, a different section, but as you see, you can select and use a template here. You determine your subject, which is going to be then the subject of the email and as it appears within the email inbox. And then your full WYSIWYG editor for adding the, the body and text as well as control over how it should appear as plain text. And if you see here and have much experience with tokens, this is how you can then include first name, last name, address information. There's also some, let's see if I'm looking at event specific details. So because we are setting up these scheduled reminders from the event section of Civi CRM, we also have the ability to use tokens to populate the event description. We're so excited to see you at this event, which we're going to do the following thing, token event description. And um, to be able to have these again as part of that event template allows you to just save work in the future while having your communications very specific. So you can set up any number of these um, that you want in the system. And if we want to look at event templates really quickly. So if you go to events, go to event templates, loading, you can see we have two right here. If I look at this webinar one, I'll just click edit next to that. And you can see it has a lot of the same fields that when you're setting up an event, not as a template, you have most of these same settings. So what your info and settings is, including all those custom fields that are the case for this organization, the event location that could be saved if it, it actually has a physical location, in this case it doesn't. Any fees, your online registration, your scheduled reminders if those were set up, which isn't the case here. But then when you go to create a new event, which I'll do that here. Events, new event. Can you, uh, load. Oh. yeah, go ahead. I was gonna ask, can you comment on the, the different ways that, that fees are collected, whether, I guess I'm trying to figure out if the best way to do everything is to have something directly in Civi, or if we're taking fees through Eventbrite and then we have to import things after, or if we're using Square yeah. Register and then we've got to somehow, and I'm trying to sure. figure out how to, reduce duplicate work? Great question. So um, first I wanna point out to wrap up the template is the first option you have when you go to create a new event is do you want to start from a template? Mm -hmm. And if I did, if I click on one of these, it's gonna load and say all of these settings that have already been filled out about it. Now that just saved me 12 minutes, which I'm, I'm happy with in my life. <laughs> so, so that's to wrap up what you do with um, events, event templates, scheduled reminders, how all of that can be done, um, take that, you know, two days at the beginning of your campaign season to set up all your events and then have the efficiency in the future. So let's go back to um, to the event and we can look at the, the fee structure. So first off, you decide, do you actually want it to be paid or not? These ghost buttons are driving me crazy. <laughs> you say um, what the currency should be. You can have other currencies in the system enabled. That would be controlled within the administer tab and some options there. You say your fee labels, you either control what you want here for your fee structure, or I think I'll go to a different system. You configure a price set. So let's go ahead and look at price sets quickly. So I can get to price sets by going to events, manage price sets. Something I wanna note about um, price sets in CiviCRM as well is that you can set up any number of payment processors within the system and have multiple payment processors set up. You wouldn't have that as part of say one price set, um, 
but just noting, I heard a couple different options that you were talking about. So let's add a price set here. All of the ones we have already looks like are for membership. We first select what it's for. I can say it's for an event. I can say what the financial type should be. Well, you'll see in a moment that that's really not um, relevant once you get to the actual fields because you can specify the financial type on an individual line item level. So I'm glad I know where these white on white buttons are. <laughs> so um, I can just do some test of, you can see I have a text select radio checkbox. Um, one thing that we really like is the extension in Civi Serum that allows you to um, cover payment, um, the payment processing fee where you can specify what percentage you may want to add. So if someone, if you know the extension I'm talking about, someone throw that in the Google doc um, and that you can make that optional. So if someone wants to cover the credit card processing fee, it could automatically add an additional 3%. That's really great with donations or especially with those higher dollar amounts, whether that's even on just a straight up contribution form or covering their membership fee or event registration. Um, I really like that, that percentage, um, percentage capability. Okay, so we see here that when I add my individual labels, I'll just say something is 100. You can say if there's a non-deductible amount. And then you can specify here the financial type. So maybe you have the event registration that's a financial type. And we'll go ahead, see if anything else was required. Um, here, this is helpful of when that specific price option is active. So for example, early bird registrations with events where you get to have this price option show up if it's before April 1st, but not if it's after. That's where you can control with this calendar when something, a price field should display or not display. In the meantime, we'll just go ahead and click save new. So we can create another one, do another random one. We'll do option one, option two, 50, 75. You can see even on an individual line item basis, I can have a different financial type. And so this can be very accurate against what whatever your um, either reporting or accounting needs are. And so, like I mentioned um, before, when you are configuring the price set initially, then you select what um, financial type is relevant for that price set, but really that doesn't matter as much as the ability that you have to control it on the individual field level. Um, and then you have to have your price set existing before you can then select, select it in the event configuration. So when you're on that event setup screens, then you can select the price set that exists. So what other questions have come in? I know we're probably past that five minutes <laughs> that I had the warning about. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through to see what questions have come in. Don't send out the link, interesting. So I'm seeing some notes about online banking, keeping track of hundreds of multiple events. So Mike, is that scenario something where you have an event and it's kind of the same, same event that is happening on a repeated basis or tell me more about the, the um, event management needs. Okay, um, you might be on mute. Um, another thing we've done with Drupal that has been great is having in the case, I'll go to the Drupal side of the system. Sorry, excuse me, I was on mute. And if I could talk okay. about uh, sure. the mul multiple events. Uh, yes, these are tours, tours that we have uh, uh, online registration for tours of the museum, uh, maybe four tours a day, uh, uh, seven days a week. So it, uh, in the uh, under events, you know, management, all the repeated events show up and it's a hassle to scroll through them or to find one or to uh, just to keep track of them. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Honestly, that's such a great question unless someone else on the call wants to answer that. I think that that deserves a, a kind of a, a deeper dive and fit of okay. um, at the end of the day, what your reporting needs are about that. Because I think you have in general, your registration needs, you need to know who's showing up when they're showing up. So then your tour guides can know what 
to expect. Um, but then I would say the other question is what sort of follow up are you wanting to do after the fact? What are your reporting needs with those contacts? Um, and that depending on the answers to a lot of those other questions, it may determine what um, a better structure may be for how this is, how that would be set up within your system. Okay. Um, Jenna, the, I think there are some questions regarding Zoom as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know that you all have some kind of an integration with Zoom. We, yeah, you know, so that, it was very funny. We we decided in-house because it was coming up with a few clients. We're like, darn it, we're just going to build this thing. We're just going to build a Zoom Civi integration. And then we started doing some discovery down that path internally. And we're talking to different organizations we work with to see about if people wanted to throw some sponsored hours our way to do that. And then someone on our team did a better Google search than anyone else had. And there's already one that exists. And I guess I've been out of the loop of using it. So if someone wants to speak to the one that has been built, um, because I know that there is an extension that exists because we kind of paused our, let's not reinvent the wheel then. Um, so maybe that's something that afterwards I'll go back into our, our files and see, see where it ended up. And I can throw, throw links to things in the shared doc. Um, that sounds I know, great. Sorry, yeah, I know that some of the things about um, access, I'm not remembering for sure to what degree it was respecting um, access of, of Zoom, knowing the different kind of restrictions that can be set up there, but something to follow up on. What other questions have come in? I think Yay, um, discount. Was somebody, I see was somebody that. gonna jump yeah. in on that question regarding Zoom? I think I heard somebody unmute themselves. People want to talk about their favorite extensions. I saw reference to Civi Discount, and absolutely, um, um, that is a great extension. Um, hi there. Um, I don't know. Is this the right time to ask questions about uh, payment recording and processing? Sure. Okay. So, um, what we found is that um, there are multiple when, when when we have people that are paying via credit card. Um, I think when we're, when we're trying to extract that information in the form of a report, depending on the way that the information was submitted, um, it, it, it affects the way that the information is presented in the extracted report. Um, and I think this is something that was lightly touched on earlier about the different ways that you can accomplish the same thing in CIVI. Um, so I just wanted to know if, if, if you could do a little bit of a, maybe a cursory dive into that, to that process um, as far as it goes with recording credit card payments for the events. You know, I have to, for on, from my standpoint, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about of depending on the payment processor or type used, it's showing up differently. Um, so if anybody else felt like they kind of captured or understood more what that need is, please jump in. I mean, I think it would be like we integrate with Stripe for our payment processing. And so I assume that it would just be a payment done through the payment processing would just go through Stripe. You can set, set up, um, you can also set up different types of price sets um, for payment processing. So if you, for this specific event. Um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about price sets, Jenna. Yeah, I talked about price sets um, briefly. I think what I'm going to do instead is go back to events and show how you can select the different payment processor that you want to use for registration. And if multiple are yeah. available. So for example, pay later or pay by PayPal or pay by authorized.net. But in reality, those, um, could, could display differently. Um, so this, here's an example of a screen that, the theme of which annoys me, but I've noted that, <laughs> is the, in this case, this is one of our demo environments and we, it looks like we have two dummy um, accounts set up. So for example, payment processor, I could select from both authorize, .net, and another credit card processor. All of your, um, all of your accounts for your payment processors are configured in here somewhere, remember? 
your um, payment methods, payment mm. processors. Here we go. So this is where you can set up and enable additional payment processors. Some of those require also installing extensions for them to work. Um, but that that's pretty common, especially I've seen with folks who use PayPal that they have PayPal as an option and something else and maybe also do pay later. Does that help at all or I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> giving any valuable information on your question. Yeah, and we can follow up afterwards. Yeah. We have about 15 minutes left um, okay. for our call today. Um, Jenna, thank you so much for the demo. This is super helpful. Yeah. Um, and I agree, we can share some links in the in the collaborative notes document. A couple of things I did wanna note um, for the way we set up the Zoom integration with our Civi events is we, we don't ask people to sign up in Zoom at all. We just create a Zoom link and add that to our confirmation email. When we send out, um, and we do set, use Civi rules for that. So when someone signs up for an event, they automatically get an email that has the Zoom link in there. Um, they also can, I've figured out a workaround where you can create a, a Google Calendar event, which is um, public. And so they can add it to their calendar because that was one thing that was nice about Zoom is just adding the event to their own calendar. And so the workaround with it, creating an event in a Google public calendar and sharing that link in the confirmation email, that has definitely um, is something that we include in the follow-up email. We also use the timeanddate.com because we have people joining the event from different parts of the world so they can figure out what time the event is in their city where they're joining from. Sorry, go ahead, Jenna, were you gonna share something? Oh, I was just gonna show that this is what, we never looked at the online registration and it's at the bottom of the online registration that you say what the messaging is on your thank you, which is the confirmation or not the confirmation screen, that's this, but the thank you screen after if you've confirmed your information. And this is where you can control the, and say, yes, you do want an email confirmation to be sent. And it looks like it's of upgrades. We need a display, but you would control the text here and could include the link from that or as the other example of using a rule in Civi to have something triggered with a specific communication. I was gonna note too, something else that I think, I think we need to release that was developed from this project is also an iCal attachment. Um, so upon this email, then having the ability to have an, an iCal or a calendar attachment to then be able to click and automatically have that added at the correct um, time, depending on your time zone, and that being important, especially as a lot of these opportunities and a lot of opportunities are um, virtual and people are calling in from all over. And that can be annoying to have to manually take something that you have a confirmation of, but then have to add that to your own calendar. So to have the system do that in a way automatically is a um, extension that should be, should be released if, if it hasn't already. So that was all. Yeah, no, that's, Super helpful. Um, let's see, I think we had a few more questions. I'm gonna just share a few few other things that I think have been really helpful for us in terms of our events. We always ask in our events um, where people heard about the event because as we're marketing the event, we wanna know, are they hearing about it from social channels? And then the other thing that we always include in our registration form is questions that people have for our presenters. And I think it's not only useful for us to know um, where, what kinds of things our attendees are interested in, it's really helpful for the panelists to see what kind of questions we're getting. And it also makes it, the whole registration process a little bit more interactive. We get to know um, who people are and what they're interested in. So I, I would really recommend that as you all are building your registration forms, try to think outside the box. Don't just go with what's, what's in Civi. I mean, we have some custom fields that we've created for, you know, how did you hear about the event? Um, and also for what questions do you have for our panelists that we add to our registration form? Um, and as I mentioned, we send out 
uh, custom message templates using SIVI rules when people confirm. Also, we've had some mixed results with scheduled reminders going out at odd times. And so we prefer not to use scheduled reminders because we wanna make sure that they get them at the correct time. And I know there was a question about the event to uh, date token, Jenna, if you know if that also includes the time or if it's just the date. I don't know off the top, that's a great question. Okay, that's something um, we can also look at th that in the follow-up collaborative notes. But um, the other thing that's been really helpful for us is after we do any of our webinars, we send out an email right away. Uh, with Zoom, you can add a link to a survey within Zoom, but that survey link that we use is actually to um, a web form that we've created in Civi. And so we're getting all of that data on what people thought about the event, uh, quotes that they wanna share in the follow-up survey, but it's not through Zoom, it's through Civi. And that's been amazing for us because we can see um, feedback right away. We also send out an email to all the people who signed up for the event in case they don't see the link directly in Zoom. But in Zoom, you can insert an outside party link for the survey. So that's what we do. And then we uh, send out a reminder right afterwards uh, to people about, you know, to give feedback to the event. But again, linking to our web form. We were using a Civi profile for that, but it didn't make sense to recreate a profile every month so that we switched to using a web form and just changing the date and also seeing all of the results um, for both the registration event registration and also the survey results, uh, we, we've created reports so I can easily share those with our team and they can see what questions we're getting from people who are signing up. They can see easily what kind of feedback we're getting from an event. Um, so those are some other tips in terms of um, not only collecting data from attendees before the event, but also after the event so we can continue to improve on on our events. And I'll share some of the links to our events and also the survey that we've created in the collaborative notes document afterwards. So you can check that out. We just we just finished doing an event. Um, and then what we do with the webinar recording is we share the video recording with the event participants afterwards, share it on the YouTube channel and also embed it on our website and then send people directly to our website to watch the recording. Um, so I saw a comment earlier about making sure you don't use Eventbrite for registration, paying Eventbrite, totally agree with that. Put all your data in Civi, whether it's your registration data or your event survey data, everything should go into Civi. That's why I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is using Zoom for registration instead of Civi because why would you want to put all your data in Zoom? You know, all of your data sh can easily go into CV, even though you're using Zoom for the actual event. Um, so similar to what I did for the event, our campfire event today, um, I just added the Zoom link. I didn't make people register through Zoom, but just added that Zoom link in the follow-up reminder emails and also when people signed up. So I, I want to just end there in terms of some of the tips I had, and I will um, share some of those in the, the collaborative notes document. But in this last eight minutes, if anybody else wants to unmute themselves, share any tips they have for events or any questions, that would be great. Great, I think there are some people sharing in the chat, which is great. So um, Barry <clears throat> shared that surveys are best done with Drupal web forms, totally agree, and Caldera forms, so we can. Yes, um, the, the CIVI rule that we use to trigger communication, so it's basically based on event registration. And uh, let me see if I can pull it up on my screen and so I can show you what's in the rule and how it's triggered. Um, and I think I mentioned in a past campfire chat, we build out all of our 
message templates in Mosaico. So all of our confirmation emails are also mobile responsive. So let me see if I can pull that up on my screen and share my screen in a second. And in the meantime, if anyone else has, while I get this set up, if anyone else has any other questions or thoughts. Okay, well, let me just um, share my screen in terms of the, the city rule, just one second. I'm just pulling up the last one that we just did. Okay. Great. Okay, let me see if I can pull this up and we're almost almost out of time, but can you guys see my screen okay? This is our um, July webinar confirmation. I'm in CIVI rules and it's pretty simple. It's uh, the condition is the link trigger is event participant is added and the condition is the participant status is one of registered. And then the field value comparison is event ID 52, which is the event ID. Um, and then it uses this message template that I created, which is the 20, 21 July 28th webinar confirmation. Um, any questions about this, this rule? And I can also add this, these details in the in the chat, I'll show you all the message template we used as well um, for this specific event. And like I mentioned earlier, I really am not a fan of the automated emails um, directly through Civi. So we do use message templates for everything. Uh, so this is the confirmation email that I'm showing. Um, so we have that you're confirmed the July 28th webinar link. This is an email that we I created uh, originally in Mosaico. So it has our header. It has the, the name of the event, converting it to their time zone. And as I mentioned, the Google public event link, um, our Zoom webinar link. And then it has some information about the the webinar, who the panelists are. And then we also always include resource links about the topic and then supporting our webinar. Um, and then we always have our the name of either our CEO or whoever is kind of helping to, to manage the webinar. So we use the CIVI rule to send out this uh, message template. Any other questions, thoughts? We have about four minutes left. Yeah, I just uh, typed something into the chat. Um, is there a way to have multiple prices on an event? Like uh, there's a base charge and there's a charge for a book. Do we have something like that? Yes. And a way to record multiple different payments against an event. Yes, there's, um, and there's also some nice, there's another extension that is for um, line item reporting where you can do good reporting on what the line items of um, contributions have been. So for example, as you saw in the, when I was sharing my screen, how you could have that, um, you could have your different fields in the price set required or not required. The event fee could be required. You could make a book purchase optional. That's probably a different financial type than an event fee that could be required or not. Um, and so that's where I think someone had mentioned in chat too, that's where um, playing around with CVCRM price sets. And then once you create that price set, being able to select from that when you're creating your CIVI event. And the ability to collect different payments against an event from the same person? I don't know if it's about different payments um, because it would be one transaction when they register. And let's say that there is an event fee, the purchase of a book, an additional donation, and a memorial pin. So maybe there's four things that are part of that one transaction. You'd be able to see within the system kind of those four line items that are part of that one transaction and be able to do reporting on those line items and have those line items associated with different um, financial types as needed within Civi CRM. Since from an accounting standpoint, your event fee is probably treated and looked at differently than say a product purchase. 
but that user themselves for ease of use, they just submit and enter in their credit card information once to say purchase those four things as part of the registration process. Let's say on Monday, I um, sign up for the event and I pay my money. On Tuesday, I add in a book and I pay my money all on the same event. It's doable. I don't think there was a way to kind yeah. of do separate because it's tied into one registration. And so I agree with Jenna, it's, it's you know, if you wanted to separate it out and then you can just create a separate page where people can buy additional things and then you can see what else they've bought. But I think when they're registering, that's probably the best time for them to purchase whatever else additions that they want at the same time. Um, I do want to add the link. Uh, I mentioned the survey in my remarks. So here's a link that I've just put in chat for the survey that we use for our webinar and the kinds of questions we ask. I'm sure you guys have other things that you want to ask. Um, and I would love to see other people's surveys too in terms of good things to ask event participants. Um, but that's just one example. Well, we're almost out of time. Jenna, thank you so much for sharing um, this demo with us. This is super helpful and uh, let's continue the discussion um, in the in Mattermost. I don't know if you guys are on Mattermost, but it's basically a chat for CVCRM. So it's chat.civicrm.org. It's a really great way to connect with others in the community. I just, it's not quite a link, but just copy and paste that in. Definitely join Mattermost. There are so many different channels on there where you can post questions, share what you're working on. And I think as the people who are more experienced, you know, the more you all can also share and help to respond to questions within the community, it definitely helps everyone. So I just want to thank everyone for joining this afternoon. And let's, um, we continue to do these campfire chats as a way to learn from each other. So let's um, plan to reconnect at the end of August, uh, last Friday of every month at the same time. If there are any changes, I'll let you know, but just be on the lookout for an invitation for the, for the next campfire chat. Thank you again. Thanks everyone.